sometimes people do not feel like they're being heard and because of not feeling like they're being heard they either raise their voices louder or they probably act out with a behavior because acting out it is a means of communicating so a person might act out by shouting or screaming at another individual because they feel like they're not being heard or in some situations a person may actually try to escape or avoid a situation because their perception is that if I try to engage this other individual or group of individuals in a conversation or some kind of dialogue it just wouldn't make sense so before all of that just escape just leave the immediate environment and if I can't leave the, the immediate environment physically then I'll just escape mentally so I will go somewhere mentally visualize it in my head and I may be in the environment with the other individuals that I really can't stand but mentally I'm just not here so I am protecting myself mentally so there are a number of, of ways in which a person uh, when they feel like they're not being heard they can act now we are continuing the discussion on classroom management and creating a positive classroom environment for our students and for our teachers as well and today we want to talk about validating the feelings of students we do have a number of students and it's in some situations quite alarming where we have a number of students who are experiencing some kind of abuse physical abuse uh, sexual abuse maybe economic abuse or physical abuse or, or verbal or any of those so um, our students are actually experiencing quite a bit and uh, communicating with them is, is sometimes a bit of a challenge because our students may spend so much time for example on social media something that could actually distract them or something that they feel more connected with as opposed to talking about their feelings that that when we are in their presence and we want them to tell us what's going on sometimes they really don't because they figure what they perceive and many times erroneous sometimes they're actually accurate but many times erroneously they perceive that as adults we do not understand what they are going through and therefore it makes no sense even trying to communicate with us as to how they're feeling because we are just going to judge them negatively and some students if they have been placed in a situation where they actually have been judged negatively in the past then they are more likely not to engage that same individual or sadly other individuals who may actually have their best interests at heart they no longer try to engage those individuals in conversations and because of that may suffer in silence or may gravitate to a group that do not have their best interests at heart a group that may actually suggest ways of behaving or teach that young individual that student way of behaving to be heard and it many a times it's a maladaptive way of being heard so you find that a child may act out may involve in aggression violence fighting cursing threatening other individuals and in some situations they actually um, be benefit because when they engage in some kind of confrontation maybe the other, other individual backs down or backs off and because of that they actually get what they want so it becomes a mechanism that they use in the future because they learn how to behave when they want something so I will strongly recommend as educators teachers lecturers professors facilitators those who are working in the field of education even administrators in the field of education because many times a child may engage in a particular behavior and they are sent to the principal office or sent to the Dean's office or the form teachers office and if the form teacher dean or principal or vice principal or head teacher doesn't treat with the, the situation in a mature way it can actually escalate it it could become very volatile and uh, i have seen situations where administrators and students are, are fist fighting it out that i mean when it reaches to that degree then uh, it, it has already reached too far so a good method or a good strategy less intensive strategy if you want to call it that is to validate the student's feeling 
Now, you're not saying, well, I understand what you, you mean, I understand what you're feeling to a student, because many times we may actually not understand what a student is feeling in, in its entirety. We may have an idea, because we may have felt that way before, based on a situation we were in. But as our children are experiencing so many different challenges or concerns in their lives, it may be that we have never really felt or experienced what they're going through. So it may be advantageous to say to a child or a student or a teenager, well, I really don't understand what you're going through. Could you explain it to me, please? So you can say something like that. Or maybe you can say something like, I know some people who are experiencing what you are just describing to me. They say they feel this particular way. And you probably name the particular way that you will have learned or heard persons mention. And you follow up that by saying to the child, is it that that's how you feel? If that's how you feel, then I could well imagine how it's contributing to dot, 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 and you probably say something else. So you want to be able to make that human connection. Carl Rogers talk about the human connection with students. It is not that you as the teacher or the administrator is up here and the children, children or the teenager is, is down here. You want to make that connection with that human being because that is what our students are. They're human beings and they have feelings, they have thoughts, they have emotions, they reason, right? And you want to be able to make that connection with them. So validate how they're feeling. Sometimes you may have to do a, a post-situational follow-up on a child. So take for example, you may have had to engage in some kind of strategy in the classroom that will have caused the, the child to separate from the rest. So maybe you say to that child, okay, there's a, a timeout corner that you have. You don't want to have the timeout corner too far away from the other students that, or far away from you that that child can't hear what is going on in the class while you're teaching. You want to have it in an in a, in a area where they can still hear and still pay attention but maybe you had to separate them from the rest of the group after you do a post-situational follow-up so you call that student maybe it's some time after the class has ended or probably could be the following day you will know the situation you can choose and you say to that child or that student or that teenager that preteen i i noticed that let's say it's the same day I noticed that earlier in the class you had some real challenges focusing. Is it that the subject matter was too difficult? Because if it was difficult, then I could understand why you will have challenges focusing. You can probably ask a question or say something like that. Make a comment. And then you can help the child to appreciate in the future if it is that you're having challenges focusing, paying attention, or probably you have challenges in comprehending what is is being taught you can raise your hands you can write on a piece of paper and give to me and say miss so sir i don't understand what's going on or if you just need a break because sometimes that's what our students may need they may just need a time for us to stop the class give them a breather probably do something novel with them maybe play a game or ask a question or just give a, a, a easy quiz or just do a recap or recall of what we just did so we give them a little time to mentally breathe maybe that's what is, is needed so you can say to the the, the student um, I could now understand that so I, or I feel that I understand what was going on you probably felt as though all this information was just coming at you all at once and you could not deal with it is that how you felt because if that's how you felt then i could probably understand what you're experiencing or what you have experienced as to why you you felt you needed to act out in the class the way you did because if i was going through that situation where a lot of information was coming at me all at once um, i i probably may feel some stress is that what you were feeling? You felt stressed? You felt annoyed? You, you felt frustrated? So this is how you're talking with them. And you're probably doing that sitting down in a very relaxed way, not confrontational, standing over them or pointing at them or pointing, or, right? 
Um, neither do you want to call the, the students any names such as foolish or stupid or, or say things or make comments like you don't care about your education, that's why you were doing that. Right? We don't want us to, to, to go down that route because many times we may go down that route and we might, might be actually inaccurate in our assumption of the situation. So students have feelings, they have a limbic system in their brains. So they will experience emotion, they will experience sadness, they will experience frustration, they will experience joy as well. So a student who recognizes that you as a teacher was willing to come to them and have a dialogue or to come to them and have a conversation, there's a level of happiness they will feel. There's a, a sense that they can trust you because you have their best interests at heart, not just making certain that they follow all directions in the classroom and get all their coursework completed and finish your curriculum but you actually have a genuine interest in them and I'll tell you what I have seen situations where students were willing to actually go to a teacher and talk about something that was happening in their personal life but did not feel comfortable talking to their peers about the situation or even felt comfortable talking to their parents about the situation. And that became possible because of the kind of positive environment, the fact that that teacher was welcoming, was warm, was willing to listen in a very non-judgmental way and to listen critically actively with a view to support with a view to help even if that student needed to be adjusted or to be disciplined the student is more likely to actually accept that discipline or accept that that adjustment because they will have noted that the teacher actually had their best interests at heart the teacher is one who will sit and listen uh, the teacher is one who will set aside time uh, I've actually heard students, when they engage in inappropriate behaviors, based on the connection that they will have made with a teacher, they said they felt as though they disappointed the teacher. Uh, they felt that how they act or reacted to a situation was not called for. And I've actually seen situations where students go and apologize to teachers and say that they were very sorry of how they, they reacted. Not just in front of other students, but how they reacted in front of that teacher because that teacher has trust in them and they felt as though they will have broken that trust some in, in some instance. They will have actually disrespected that teacher, so they felt that guilt and that sense of remorse and they felt they needed to say something. So as educators, as teachers, we want to be able to make that human connection with our our students we want to validate their feelings they do have feelings we want to recognize that they do feel pain and hurt and sadness and we want to be able to support them or even if we have to discipline them we want to do it in a spirit of love and mildness and, and be very kind with them because we are actually showing them or modeling an, a, a behavior that we want them to actually demonstrate in their lives, in the classroom, and even when they get older. So we would definitely want to show them a model that they can follow that is appropriate. So if you find this content to be valuable, like, comment, and you can even share this video with someone else that you think might benefit from the information. So until then, take care.